Thank you. So, Alan, you're the active uh, rebounding leader on this, on this team. What do you, what's your take on that? Well, I try to find other ways to impact the game other than scoring. And I just feel like I can do a good job at uh, rebounding, so I really try to focus in that area a lot. Does that give you a certain amount of pride that you can do that in addition to the scoring? Yeah, I do. I mean, I need to help out on the boards, too. I mean, I can rebound well for a 6 6 guard, and I need to help out the bigs, too, because, I mean, if they're blocking out, you know, all the other bigs on the other team, then, I mean, we need to help crash the guards. So I just feel like I can help them by doing that with my length. So. <laughs> I feel like I crashed the boards more. Now I know you're pretty good friends with Richard. How's he coping with the fact he's not going to be playing the rest of the year? Uh, I mean, you know, he's put it behind him. I mean, it's in the past. He can't do anything about it. So, I mean, he's just good spirits about it. And he's just going to, uh, you know, just take this time to work harder and, uh, you know, just get ready for next year. Coach Montgomery said he does expect him back next year. He's a little confident. He'll have things together and be back in the year. Yeah, definitely. I'm pretty sure that. Uh, you know, it's a learning experience for him, and uh, he doesn't want to be in the situation again. So he's definitely uh, going to focus a lot more this semester and, you know, just get ready for next year. Rob, do you, sorry, do you find it all surprising that five of you guys came in last year and uh, Gary Franklin was out the door real quick, Richard's not ineligible, uh, Alex Rossi only got to play four minutes in one game because of all his injury problems. Is it real mind boggling that this group of you? There's really only a couple of people who are able to even play right now. Uh, not really. I mean, we all uh, have certain roles, and you know, we all understand that. But uh, everybody, uh, you know, you just got to take advantage of your opportunity when it comes. So, uh, and uh, it's unfortunate that Gary had to leave and Richard's ineligible and Alex had all these injuries. But uh, we just have to work with the pieces that we have. So. Speaking of taking advantage of opportunities, how about what this guy's to you guys. Oh, he's definitely done a good job for us, especially in a, the Washington game. You know, if we didn't have, I'm pretty sure if we didn't have Robert's points and, you know, him out there helping us rebound and all that stuff, we probably wouldn't have pulled off that win. But he's definitely came in and, uh, you know, taking advantage of his opportunity. Like I said, he's done great so far. Rob, how much did the trip to Europe help? I mean, on, on that, you know, you had Rich down with, this, with the eye thing. You had Harper kind of have a, the ball from knee in the back. And, now it's kind of come full circle. Richard's out. Harper's kind of, you know, slowed down. You're, yeah, I kind of have to be the man down here. Yeah, the Scandinavian trip really uh, put my role in perspective here at Cal. Um, I kind of realized that I needed to be more of a, a player uh, on our team. We needed to have someone who could score and rebound. But uh, that wasn't my first role. My first role was to rebound, defend, and screen, um, and I, I'm doing that. And all of this, just the scoring is just a bonus, just of guards being left open and whatnot. And I guess teams not really thinking I'm a threat, and when I'm right next to the basket, I can just dunk it. So it's not, you know, it's just good team play all together, I'd say. Is it kind of surreal that you've taken like a cult hero status, the Terminator, and everyone not talking about that? It's kind of weird. Um, I mean, yeah, it's 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 weird because I've never been in this type of position before. But I mean, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, I kind of like it. I think it's. Uh, I mean, I, I'd rather have, I'd rather have that role than just the role of not doing anything. You know, it's I like it all together. What were your expectations when you, when you come here and not sure where you might fit in? And, and Coach Montgomery just said he, he did a little research and then said we're giving this guy. I uh, my honestly, I thought my role was just going to be to be a practice player, and just be a college student. That's really what I, I thought my role was going to be. But things just started to happen for me. You know, uh, Omandi left because of personal things. Uh, Max Zhang went to China, and just just things like that kind of opened up depth for me in general and my role changed uh, you know this year compared to my role last year and it probably would have been even different you know if those guys hadn't have left so I've just just gotten a strange turn of events throughout my career here so your parents are, are military am I for saying they, is, that, is that accurate? Uh, my mom was in the Marine Corps for 20 years okay. uh, and that's why I, I lived at Edwards Air Force Base because they had a 
branch there. So, yeah, my mom was a Marine for 20 years. Your father was not? He was in the Army for a short short period of time, uh, but not. he wasn't nearly as uh, you know, into it as my mom, what obviously. Was, was her rank? What did she do? Uh, she she uh, retired as a staff sergeant. She was uh, computer administration. Basically, she would, uh, whenever uh, any kind of helicopter or something would have a problem, they need something fixed, my mom would basically be the person who tells the person who needs to know the fact that there's a part missing or you know she was just basically in the background whereas in like a mechanic would you know actually change the engine she was the one who mm-hmm. got the parts and everything that that person needed for that you know that's basically that was her role so what, was, what was it like growing up military? Uh, I, uh, I moved around a lot it uh, caused me to uh, learn how to basically change uh, just in general I mean I had to make friends quick and I had to learn how to, you know, get over friends quick because there would be times where I would only live in a place for one year and have really good friends and then just show up to school and they would all be gone. Um, and that happened to me a few times where I would just go show up to school and a lot of my friends would be gone. Because uh, they were all military families? Yeah. Uh, I lived in El Toro Marine Base uh, in Irvine, California, and it actually shut down now, and I was like, me and my friends when we were in fourth fifth grade we were the last ones to ever live on that base and people just started leaving and this kind of how it was my whole life like live in a place for three years and then just leave you moved what half a dozen can you tell us how many times uh eight or nine times i think uh, i think i'd say yeah and you're studying what here? american studies american studies yeah. so you were sort of thinking you'd just be practicing with these guys and uh yeah offering some competitive practices? Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought, you know. And then just every once in a while at the end of the game, just get mine when I can. But that changed. Well, you were getting uh, some more minutes earlier in the season anyway, and then now with the Richard situation, that's how have you, uh, how have you taken that? Well, what did you think of when you heard that Richard was not going to be around for the rest of the season? That impacts your role. Yeah, I mean, first, first I, I was just stunned from like a team perspective because we need all the depth we can get, and then afterwards I kind of thought to myself like, man, I need to, I really need to you know, step up because there's not many people at that position that are left on our bench that we can go to, so I kind of knew I needed to step up. Robert, do you, do you expect that until now maybe you haven't exactly been on the other team's scouting board and that's possibly going to change? You're not going to be finding yourself all by yourself under the basket with nobody guarding you. Yeah, that's going to definitely change. Uh, That's the reason why I would say I had a lot of open looks that I've had. It's because they were like, yeah, this kid's some walk on, you know, and just leave them open. And now they are going. And I actually saw some of that at Washington State where I would be, you know, at the block open and then Jorge would like drive to the basket or something. And then their big man wouldn't show on Jorge and would come to me. So I didn't get like a drops you know just a dunk and it's I, I'm sure I'm sure I'm already on people's scouting reporters just don't leave open for a wide open dunk that's, that's and, and maybe you weren't before no absolutely not uh, does that help I mean does that help you guys to have another your depth is not you don't have a ton of depth right now to have another face who <coughs> opponents are taking notice of to yeah. open things up for the rest of you yeah definitely I mean um <coughs> When Robert comes in, you know, he brings, you know, he can score. And, you know, uh, he's big body. So, I mean, you know, even the other team has a mismatch and Rob is, you know, bigger than they're big, we can go down to him because it's not like, you know, he can only, you know, just get drop offs. I mean, he can practice, he makes hook shots, you know, he hits the little jumper. So, I mean, he can do other things and just, you know, get a drop off and, you know, dunk it. But like he said, you know, other teams probably just didn't, you know, see him as a threat because, you know, they're like, you know, they probably never heard of him. But, now, I mean, you know, you see a kid come off the bench and score 16 points. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's going to open up your, you know, the other team's eyes. So, pretty sure it's a, but he's he definitely helping us out though on the offensive end. So, Stanford has a week to a week to prepare. They've seen the re- most recent trip. What kind of challenges do they present for you? They're they they have very versatile bigs. They have a lot of options on the bigs. I would say maybe they're six deep when it comes to bigs. Uh, I think they have. 
Gage, Powell, Owens, Trotter, Zimmerman. I mean, they have they have a lot of guys, and each of them can do their own things. And they're gonna, it's gonna be interesting. And I think we're gonna have you know a, a job to do really, to really match up with all their bigs because they have so many things that all their bigs can do. So what did military mom, military dad think of the bow bomb thing in the season? Oh, I mean, my dad ever since I was a kid, kind of just. Just to let me do what I want with with my hair, and I mean I like it. It's a good look for me. Uh, but yeah, I think my parents don't mind the faux hawk. Are you are you recognized around campus? I mean, you're a tall guy. Uh, you probably stand out some, but do people know you as a basketball player these days? Yeah, I mean they. I've kind of made a just a connection with students just from being friends with people and knowing people like off campus not so much as a basketball player like I'm, I'm Robert oh and also he's on the basketball team as in there's other guys who are like oh he's on the basketball team and I know him it's like I kind of they kind of got to know me before I was you know before they knew I was on the basketball team type thing what do you plan to use an American studies degree I'm not totally familiar with what would you use that degree for down down the road would you hope I mean uh, I mean I have some options uh, I, w I, w I would like to see maybe being like a teacher, you know, something like that, because I I have a good amount of patience for younger younger kids, uh, even though I may not have some patience for some of my teammates sometimes. <laughs> but I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, it's yeah, I would say teaching is a good would be a good uh, option for me with that degree. I mean, I I think I could go anywhere through. You know, unless it's like you know, like kindergarten, I'm not gonna go there. But I mean, you know, like middle school, high school, something like that, It'd be interesting. What's it like uh, growing up with uh, Sergeant Mom? Is she, is she a disciplinarian or is she tough? Or? She uh, she was she was definitely the one that would get on my case uh, because she would do that with all her Marines. Like that was just her thing. It was just, and sometimes I think she forgot that I was like her kid and would just like she would like maybe curse or something and be like oh wait <laughs> I do that with my marines but I can't do that with my, with my son uh, but my dad um, my dad's a really big guy so as a kid I was really intimidated by him you know when I was like maybe five or six he was like a like a bodybuilder he was like really really big guy he was probably 400 pounds 610 really big man like and, it, and he was really intimidating so anything my mom would say I kind of would just be like yeah whatever and my dad was just like he was pretty much the guy who got things done for me at least because he was just so big and scary <laughs> it takes a big guy to make you feel small yeah I mean not any, yeah now it's a different story but back then it was you know <laughs> it's a scary figure to look at every day Al you've kind of been the forgotten man here because he's the cold hero of the one of these at Stanford, and the, you you played them twice or twice three times already. Yeah, we uh, you know, we just uh, you know, they got a couple of new pieces, and uh, they definitely done a good job this year so far. And uh, you know, I just feel like you know our coaches, you know, do a good job at scouting them, and you know, Coach Montgomery kind of you know knows the, their style, you know, since coaching there, but. Uh, I just feel like, you know, if we just do what we do, Cal basketball, just play as a team. You know, I really feel that we can have good success. And, uh, you know, we play really good team defense sometimes. And, you know, sometimes we do get, you know, uh, we lose focus sometimes on the defense and, you know, it kind of gets us caught into some slip ups. But I just feel like we're just focused for the whole 40. On both sides, I'm pretty sure we'll be solid. Having Washington State, um, was it loss of focus uh, defensively or Mike suggested that you thought the team got a little fatigued? Uh, what, what did you think? Uh, it probably could have been a little bit of both. Um, I just feel like, you know, we had opportunities and uh, we were winning the whole game pretty much. And I guess it was just a uh, loss of focus. You know, I just felt like uh, we probably felt like we had the game since we were winning the whole game. But uh, I guess we just didn't close it out. And, you know, they capitalized on our mistakes. So that's what happens in basketball. I think the conference is not, I mean, obviously after the, the non conference schedule. That no one was ranked anymore. Mm -hmm. Back to was kind of seen as down, maybe one or two bid league. Two bid league. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how much more? How much more important does that make the game against Stanford? Both you guys are at the top now. Uh, it definitely is a big game. Um, you know, even though we're still at the top and first, it uh, 
it just shows that, you know, any team that you play in the Pac-12 obviously can uh, upset you. And um, I just feel like we just have to really just focus. I mean, it really is a big game. And uh, and like you said, Stanford's pretty good. So uh, we just really have to just, you know, execute, and do what we do best. Do you think they've kind of fulfilled their potential from last year? Last year they had a lot of talent, but weren't as good as they are now. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that they probably uh, are doing better than what a lot of people thought since they had lost Jeremy Green as well. You know, they're leading scorer. And I'm pretty sure people didn't think that uh, that they're going to be as good as they would have been this year without him. But they definitely proved a lot of people wrong. And uh, they're just playing great team basketball. And, you know, when everybody's on the same page, you know, everything's going to go right for you. So, How would you describe the dynamic of playing Stanford? Because you know, basketball is so different than football. It's not a whole big game week. But is there something special when you guys are playing them and, and the fans are into it as much as they're? Yeah, I definitely feel it's a big game for us. I mean, you know, it's the rivalry, you know. Uh, for the Bay Area team, and I just feel like, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to be pumped up for this game. You know, Stanford is, you know, you always want to beat your rival, of course. So I really do feel it's a big game for us as players. And kind of a sense of urgency because you're home, given what happened up in Washington, the way that curve ended. Yeah, definitely. And we definitely need to win every home game that we can because, you know, we need as many wins as we need in the Pac-12 to stay at the top. And, um like you said, with uh, everybody that's going to come out, it's definitely going to bring good energy for us. So I feel that we can feed off of that too. So. Hey, Alan, uh, what ways do you think you're better than you were last year? Um, I guess I can say just being more aggressive, I guess. Uh-huh. More aggressive. I was more aggressive from the start of the year than last year. So I guess I can say I'm better with that. Uh, um, That's still the ongoing battle for you. Still is. I, I don't know why, but I mean, it's just something I have to just, you know, develop within myself. And I have to start from practice so I can carry it over to the game. But um, I just feel like, you know, I really do have to move on from certain things that I still have bad habits in. Like if I miss three, four shots, I just tend to take myself out of the game. I just get real frustrated with myself and I just feel like, you know, nothing's going right for me. And I really feel like I have to break out of that. But uh, I'm really trying to work on, you know, if the ball's not going in for me that now, I'm really trying to just focus on uh, rebounding. You know, just try to make some plays, you know. I don't have to make a play just by scoring all the time. I can, you know, get another teammate a good look and they can score. Is that something that wasn't sort of part of your your mindset last year? You felt, saw yourself as a scorer for the team and when that wasn't working, maybe you couldn't give the team much? Yeah, probably. I felt like I was limited. But uh, it just all I just feel like the game of basketball is really just mostly a mindset. And, you know, you know, with the more experience that I've got, you know, I started to understand more and understand that I just can't do just one thing to help my team. I have to do Um I would say so. I mean, you know, I still you know, I still find myself in situations where I may lose my man, you know, I may lose, you know, line of ball or anything like that. But I feel defensively I've gotten a lot better than last year. And what about getting to the basket? Um, <clears throat> I still feel like that's an area where I need to work on more. But I just feel like sometimes, or, you know, some games where I just feel like my, if my shot is going on, then why shy away from me? I'm going to just keep shooting the ball. But um, I feel like I do need to, you know, attack the basket more, you know, just get into the lane, do a pull-up jumper or something like that. I, I know you touched on it a little bit, but we hear it from you a lot to be more aggressive. What does being aggressive mean to you? Do you want to step out on the court at tip and set the tone? Is that what you're looking to do? Yeah, I just feel like, you know, just come out, you know, just uh, don't shy away from my shots. Don't, you know, just, you know, don't pass the ball around the first couple of plays. And like, if I'm open or if I can, you know, take my guy off the dribble, then do it. Don't, you know. I found myself in some games, uh, like the Oregon game is a good example, where I didn't start scoring until like 10 minutes left into the game. And I started so late, but, uh, I just feel like I, if I can just do that from the beginning, then I can really, you know, just really just keep that up throughout the game. Do you consider yourself a street shooter at all? Um, I could probably say I have this year. I feel like sometimes I, some games I really haven't been uh, as consistent as I as I know I can be, and it's just uh, uh, I just probably take credit for that. Uh, just. You know, I just need to put up more jumpers after practice, get more time in the gym so I can just keep my uh, my jumper the way it needs to be. So. Uh, 